I've been talking about the Vedic wisdom tradition, and now I'd like to explain just a little about the tradition itself, and also about the essence of the Vedic wisdom. Vedic wisdom tradition appeared in ancient India before the beginnings of history. It's timeless, effectively. The, the language of the Vedic wisdom tradition, uh, the Vedas, the Vedic literature, the language is called Sanskrit. Sanskrit means perfectly formed. And the Vedic, uh, the Sanskrit alphabet is extraordinarily scientific. And the Sanskrit language, very, very complex, very subtle, very poetic. It's the origin of all the Indo-European languages, which means most of the languages, for example, in India, most of the languages in, in Europe, including, of course, uh, English, Spanish, Latin, uh, Latin, Italian, French, and so on. The social structure, the Vedic social structure, also appears to be the root of the different kinds of social structures that we see in the world today. And it was, there's very good evidence that it was the original culture, the Vedic culture was the original culture, for example, in pre-Christian and pre-Roman Europe and Russia. So, for example, in, in UK, which is where I come from, uh, the, the culture before the Romans came was purely Vedic. And the Druids, they were actually Vedic sannyasis. <clears throat> they were Vedic renunciates. And it, uh, scholars have said that, at that time, one could go from UK to India, and on the way, the whole way through, the culture everywhere would be Vedic. So the Vedic culture, the Vedic wisdom, covers all aspects of life, medicine, sociology, warfare, psychology, everything. And it also gives a very broad, non-sectarian concept of spirituality. It covers spiritual knowledge, it covers meditation, it covers theistic worship, all different kinds of religious disciplines, they're contained within this, so it's completely non-sectarian. It's based on universal principles. The Vedic wisdom tradition shows us how we can get definite and certain knowledge, and it gives a framework for living peacefully, happily, prosperously, but not just materially. It shows how we can find real fulfillment at heart by becoming self-realized, by making spiritual advancement. Now, one could say, oh, Vedic tradition is so ancient, we're in the modern world, what's that got to do with us? But actually, this, this wisdom is timeless. It's like a user's manual for the universe, or the universal help files. And one could point a finger, actually, at scientific knowledge, because scientific knowledge becomes out of date very, very quickly. The science, say, at the end of the 19th century, is, and the science now is almost unrecognizable. Scientific knowledge goes out of date within 50 years. So that says that even now, when the, sci you know, the kind of science that we have, if it's going to be out of date in 50 years' time, that means it's already obsolescent. But the essence of the Vedic wisdom is never actually obsolescent. But one thing is that one needs to be guided by trained, self-realized professors in the wisdom. And then one can see how to apply these timeless principles in specific situations, in different places, at times and places, according to time and circumstance. Mm -hmm.